Okay, this is uh, February 12, 2015, Manhattan Council Senior Services, Council on a Aging Board Meeting. Uh, public session, I don't see anyone here from the public. So we'll go right to the approval of the minutes from January 8th. Uh, so we make a motion on that. Motion. motion. Second. Second. Okay, does anyone have any questions, additions, or problems with the minutes themselves? Oh, okay. So, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? No, I think it passes. Okay, next is staff report from Heather K. Lane, our part program coordinator. Thanks, Bob. Um, so, I'm going to tell you about a few things that are going very well and a few things that are coming up. I think one of the last times they came and spoke to you while we were trying to get our Zumba Gold class going. And I'm happy to say that after many months, some of which we thought we were never going to be able to have the class, we finally have steady attendance. We have about nine people attending every time we have the class. Yesterday we had 11 people in class, so it's becoming popular and we're seeing new faces coming into Zumba Gold class. It's Wednesday afternoons at 12.30 p.m. if anyone's interested in giving it a try. Men are welcome too. Um, beginning tap class just started in January. Um, our tap instructor who does tap classes all afternoon on Thursdays started a Wednesday afternoon beginning class which has also gotten some new faces into the senior center. Currently has 13 participants so that's doing very well. Um, we've been working on having some more financial education programs in the center. We're very lucky to have Helen Blatt from Edward Jones coming in and Christopher Casal, who's a financial professional who's been in the industry for 32 years. So I'm having them alternate months and do different presentations, um, things such as stock market basics, principles of stock investing, retirement accounts, how to make your retirement money last. So they have very good information and sometimes they bring refreshments, so it's definitely worth checking out. Um, coming up February 20th, we have our second cooking class with Chef Sherry McKenney. She was a chef and innkeeper at the Bourbon Ridge Inn for years and years. She's a wonderful chef. Um, this month, she's going to be making carrot potato soup, a hearty Italian soup, and dessert. Very limited sign-ups because there's only a certain number that can fit in the kitchen, but everybody gets in the kitchen, they cook together, and then they sit and eat a family-style meal. So it's a really nice program. Um, coming up in March, we have a free musical program. A local musician contacted me and wants to spend some time here at the Senior Center donating his time. So on Monday, March 9th at 2 p.m., we'll have some acoustic 12-string music from A.B. Jenkins. Um, he does some stuff around the valley, so you may actually recognize him. Um, Wednesday, March 11th, we have a poetry program, The Poetry of Growing Older, with poets John Berkowitz and Daisy Mathias, both local poets. This will be poetry about living fully, aging gracefully, and befriending death. So, a heavy topic, but it's been a popular program. They've done it at Rockridge and some of the other retirement communities in the area. And last but not least, we're starting up a drop-in knitting circle. That will be Thursday mornings from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. It will be a place where people can come knit, socialize, share patterns, share tips, all that kind of stuff. So we've had quite an active knitting group. So this will be a nice way for them to share their experiences. Um, in the coming months, we'll also have a funeral planning class, astronomy class, and many more exciting things. Um, does anyone have any questions? That's it for programming. I, I'm just going to add that <coughs> Heather and I are meeting to look at where all the gaps are in our programming in the building. Um, not only just the uh, topics, but also where there's a lot of uh, vacant time and rooms that more could be added. So we're working on that. Um, and come March, there'll be uh, 
additional items. I have a lot of I have a lot of people ask me throughout the center what's going on with travel and on that front going on. Yeah. It's been a long time. It has been a long time. We get a lot of questions about travel. So we're working with someone local who is interested in being our trips and travel coordinator. And so we're hoping he's gonna take it over and we're looking at trying to have a trip by May. Good news. And you all were when we originally had him. And then he um, had a health issue. So I believe in the newspaper we put a big article about him coming. That's when he was coming, and then he had a health issue, and now we hope he's back. Okay. That's good. Okay, thank you very much, Ellen. Thank you. Patricia, uh, finances, FYI 15 budget? Yeah, I, I don't have a sheet to hand out to you with the. Um, personal services and the OM, which is uh, our city appropriation. Um, but um, I'll have that for you next month. The um, accounts are still both in the black, um, and then come May, we'll start transferring money from the revolving accounts to pay for um, the personal services, what we owe the city. Um, but I do want to talk about the FY16 budget, which starts as of July 1st. Um, our budgets were due to the mayor on February 2nd, and uh, the instruction was that the budget was level services, which means you're not adding anything um, new for programming, I mean, even though we, that we do do that, but it doesn't mean that you're getting uh, additional staff uh, for that. So level services is it pretty much it just stays the same. The only thing that can go up is what is contractual Even with the unions, what people um, will be getting. So that's the only um, change in our budget. So nothing else has um, gone up. The um, budget meeting I have with the mayor is in March. And I don't know at what point then it goes to, um, usually there you go before all the city council where they can ask questions. And I know um, a number of you have come before to the council meeting where, it's not the city council meeting on Thursday, it's special meetings that they have for the, the budget. So I'll be sure to let you know when um, my time is there. Yeah, that's that's it for the FY16 budget. Any questions on that? No. Okay. It's just hard to believe that it's a 2016. <coughs> no. Okay. Your director's report. Yep. Uh, we're preparing tomorrow for the Valentine pancake breakfast. So if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, get them before the end of today. Um, John Kaczynski is going to be our our um, flipper. <laughs> and uh, we have students from UMass fraternity coming to assist with uh, <coughs> serving and we have other volunteers who will be helping um, and it is something open to the public and hopefully we do make money on this pancake breakfast which will go towards kick the tires campaign for the new van uh, the health and safety fair is, uh, I announced last uh, meeting, the 13th annual, annual uh, health and safety fair is coming up. It'll be May 7th. On May 6th <clears throat> is the day that um, like 67 tables have to get set up in the great room and in the lobby and all the chairs, all the furniture out of the lobby, um, and it's just getting it prepared. Bob, would you please come to the front desk? Um, the area, everything just gets set up for um, the health and safety fair. And I will say that it is probably one of the uh, more work, um, labor intensive <laughs> things that we do. Um, but it, what, what's really great about it is there's so many different organizations and agencies and the whole point of it was to bring many pieces of information and experiences to seniors and their families under one roof. So I think we accomplished that. Um, we just mailed out the applications last week and we already have four signed up and we have a number of people who have heard about the health and safety fair and are getting added to our ma master list. And we also have uh, people who have paid 
for ads already as well. So that's that's good because between the book uh, the table fee and the program, the booklet that we put out, that's what really helps pay for the whole event. Um, and we hope to have the bistro open that day as we usually do the coffee shop, of course. Um, and then people participate in our gift shop and book sale so, and mini sale. So we'll have all of that. But you'll hear more about that. And we do look for volunteers for a variety of things at that event. So if you can't move furniture, there's other things you can do. <laughs> um, as I mentioned at the last meeting, uh, Helen Roman Walters it, it took a position with the schools. And um, her last day was January 22nd. Um, her job has been posted, and probably next week um, we'll start interviewing for that position. Um, and basically what Helen did was the medical transportation and also the um, setting up all the schedules with people coming into the fitness center for their orientations and um, whatever work needs to be done with um, Sean and Anthony, the two assistants in the um, fitness center. Um, we have AARP taxes here, and um, that just started the first week of February. And we ran into a little, I'm not say little, we ran into a situation where um, AARP taxes <coughs> did not want people to have to have a scan card and pay $2 to use um, ARP taxes. And um, the long, the short of this long, long story is after, because we got reported to the IRS with an ethics violation, and what it was was that somebody really, like we were trying to get a fee for people to use ARP through getting the scan card if you were from out of town. So um, I talked to the um, agent at the IRS and to the regional ARP director. Um, Crystal also had uh, emailed when we first got this uh, complaint um, and then in talking with the mayor's office and I also uh, talked with Bob that people for ARP taxes who are from out of town um, do not pay two dollars and don't need to have a scan card they still need to uh, sign in as a guest um, for ARP taxes and this only holds true for ARP taxes um, we did point out that we have a code of conduct and this is you know, how, what we follow and um, I'm just going to say that I think what this shows is that when we have an organization come in and they want to use our space, because, then we really need to have a contract of some sort because the IRS woman was telling me about their policies and um, ARP was telling me about their policies and none of the, those policies did we know, do we have that in writing or anything, no. Um, so you know we need to have a system in place where um, we they have a clear understanding of who we are and uh, we have an understanding of kind of really what we're getting into when we have um, different agencies or organizations coming in to do something like that the ARP taxes are very important and many people take advantage of having them um, two different things happened for this year um, many of the sites were closed down for ARP taxes um, and so we became sort of the regional um, area for taxes. East Hampton is, but like Williamsburg got closed down, Hatfield got closed down, so people could um, sign up to come here. And our policy always was that as of a certain date, you know, Northampton people sign up because we are here for Northampton seniors. And then after that date, people from other communities can sign up. Um, so that actually was also, uh, we were told, was discriminatory to let Northampton people be able to sign up first. So there were just a lot, a lot of little nuances that ARP came up with um, for us in what we were doing. Um, so I think we have it all straightened out, but I think it's a heads up for what we might do next year to figure out how this can work. Um, because if you recall, the problem at the uh, end of last year was that they wanted to do the quarries and they didn't want to come through us through the quarry. We're mandated to do quarries on anybody who is a volunteer in the building or if they're an instructor, anybody who's working with seniors. Um, and what it came down to was that their quarry was way better than ours. And so what we decided to do when I had talked to other senior center directors was 
okay, you have your program, you use our space, and everything's up to you. Um, but yeah, actually, even that they have the space, it's still, there's, I think it's a, a conflict that's gotten worked out, but it's a heads up for um, looking at it for next year. Excuse me, do you know why the other places got closed? I mean, other um, places? I think I can say it's because of the number of people that can get to do taxes. Okay. That they are trying to um, consolidate. Gotcha. You did talk to the mayor uh, on this. Did he have any comments on the uh, William Northampton people sign up first? No. No. No, no. The only um, what I got from the mayor's office was that um, that we are not to um, charge people from out of town. So we are, and, but when I talked to Bob, um, the suggestion was if people still want to pay two dollars and want to, because they want to do more here, then they can do that. Just because they're doing taxes, they're not paying. It isn't mandatory. It isn't mandatory if they're doing the taxes. So, um, I, and I don't know as of yesterday, because they're here on Wednesday mornings, I don't know if somebody said, oh, I want to sign up anyway. So, we'll find out. So otherwise, you know, it goes smoothly with people coming in. And um, yesterday, nobody missed their appointments, which is great. Um, so a total of 16 is usually done on a Wednesday here. Mm -hmm. 16 appointments. So. so that's the scoop with ARP taxes. Mm -hmm. um, Emmett Schwarzo from um, Office of Elder Affairs is um, <laughs> going to be coming here to do a board training. I know we've had them here before and some of you have come, but he's going to be here again. Uh, and I will say that it really is a great opportunity for learning about what's happening in other um, senior centers and what board members should or shouldn't be doing. And it's a lot of really good give and take. And Emmett is just so experienced and has so many stories to share. He's very, very engaging. Um, that's going to be on March 26th. And it will be in the morning. Um, I don't know actually what time it will start. Uh, usually it's like around 9, but that part of it I haven't gotten back from Emmett. So I will let you know more about it. But I would encourage people to come to that because it is really, really uh, very informative and educational and fun. So. I, I, I went last time. It was excellent. Excellent. I highly recommend it, especially if you're a first time board member. It really was an education. And it was, Lighthearted hearted enough. That's very what he picked. Very light hearted. Yeah, yeah, very much yeah. so. Yeah. Almost entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, that's all right. No, I've got her again. March 26th. It is a Thursday. 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 So. And even if you've been there, you, it's like another whole experience yeah. all over again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he is great. Um, Sunday, March 15th, our corned beef and cabbage dinner. It's the first time we're trying this, um, and it's to get away from the pot of luck, uh, which was kind of going down with the uh, attendance. So we're trying this. Um, Paul Demon and John Kaczynski will be doing the cooking. Um, and it's a fundraiser for our Kick the Tires campaign. Uh, the, uh, it's open to the public, so anybody can come, and you don't even need to have a scan card to come. So, um, <laughs> uh, and we have a great Irish band coming. I wish I could tell you the name of them, but I, I can't. Um, but they are coming, and I think it will be very lively and fun, and the food will be great. That's a Sunday, though, right? It's a Sunday. Sunday. Mm -hmm. So there's no pot of luck this year? There's no pot of luck this year. There's a pot of beef. <laughs> and cabbage and carrots and potatoes. If you ever been to the um, St. Patrick's Association corned beef dinner, we do that as well. So it's the same menu, same type of cooking, same type of meat. and half the price. Yeah, it's very well attended too. Yeah, this I will say it's it's come in for dinner, listen to the music. You know, we're not doing speeches. There's no door prizes. It's it's Just the event it's itself. Yeah. That's what it is. A lot of people don't care for corned beef, so this year the St. Patrick's Association is not only doing the corned beef and cabbage, but white fish. Yeah, I saw that. Okay. Which I, I thought was very different. That's a first for me. So and, I and luckily, Pat Diggins from Smith College is going to be taking care of that. 
part. Wow, well, the fish part. So he'll know, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. So to make sure it's not <laughs> overdone. <laughs> 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 yeah, really. That's right. Crystal and I are starting to plan the uh, volunteer recognition, which we try to do every year. And that pretty much is paid for by contributions that we get from people uh, and businesses. This year we're going to have a luncheon. Last year we did a breakfast, so we can you know, kind of mix it up a little. Uh, it's going to be on Sunday, May 3rd at 11.30 to 1. Um, and that is where you know people do get honored for the number of hours, uh, the two top hour uh, people who put in the most hours. <clears throat> and it's um, people who are going to be invited will have been volunteers during 2014 and um, have volunteered at least 25 hours for 2014. So that's who will be invited. So you'll hear more about that, but plan May 3rd. Uh, again, it's a Sunday at 11.30 for that. Um, an exciting thing, uh, Florence Savings Bank Community Choice Awards, and I'm gonna say thank you to Barbara, as I do every year, because she will sit at a table and get ballots <laughs> Um, from people um, we are going to be awarded funds and we never know how much it is until that night so on more, March 4th they'll be here uh, Florence Savings will be here again for the awards and um, we will find out that night how much we're going to get and the funds that are coming through that community choice uh, awards is going towards the van so um, that will just add more to it the other thing I just want to say about the van is, um, you know, you'll see in the next uh, Cron, Street, Cron Street Chronicle how much we've uh, brought in. Um, last week I received a, uh, an anonymous $10,000 donation. Wow. I know who it is, but it's to be uh, anonymous. So it was just a wonderful uh, additional amount because, you know, basically he was saying, Oh, your your um, odometer's not moving. Is it the odometer or the yeah, yeah. the speedometer's not going anywhere? And then it's like so. Um, with wow. that, it'll be I, more than thirty thousand, uh, thirty thousand nine hundred something. Wow. Plus, um, I will say too that um, Barbara Pacelli. I don't know how many of you may have known her. Mm -hmm. She was a participant here. Um, had so many different skills, but one of them was she started Timeless Tunes here at the Senior Center. Um, she passed away and contributions are coming to the Senior Center to kick the tires campaign. So that was nice. So I'll have a, for the newspaper, I'll have a, a total um, in that. So that was good and that was very thoughtful of the family. Patty? Yes? The other day I just happened to see the van from East Hampton. It's a lovely van. And what was on the van yeah. was Florence Savings Bank. East Hampton. I mean, East Hampton. Yeah. 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 And I'm saying to myself, isn't that amazing that they can put that name on a van and we can't do anything about it? Well, I'll yet. tell you why that is. I know why that is. The, it's a rule. The Friends Group raised all the money for that van yeah. and put the logo on there because it was their van, which they then donated to the town. So that's how that occurred. So if we could do something like that, could we put something on a van like that? I, I would have to check and I'll tell you what the situation is. Elder Vision Inc. has some of the van money and this anonymous <coughs> contributions going to Elder Vision Inc. versus any of the other monies coming in, it's going into a city account, it's our account but it's through the city. So who really will be, who, and this is a city solicitor question, can you put something on there because funds are coming from somewhere else? I don't know. So we'll have to look at that. Because you are right, um, we can't have um, a, logo, a logo or a business listed as um, contributing like that sign we wanted up front we lost Probably unless they donated the whole thing right no no, no not even not the whole thing the the sir neck buick gave a van they get no recognition anywhere except for a little logo on the back not us you can well, do well it depends you know 
I would encourage them to donate it to Elder Vision Inc., a nonprofit group, friends of the okay. senior center. <coughs> Excuse me. And then they can then Elder Vision can donate it to the um, yeah. to the yeah. city. And if we donate it to the city with a logo on there, that's what we donate. Just like if you wanted it purple, then <coughs> yeah, they paint it purple and then they donate it to the city. Mm -hmm. And the city takes whatever they get or don't take it at all. But because we're getting money from two different sources, yeah. it's like who, you know, the city in the end owns it, but, yeah. you know, who is really, it? The ethics commission. More coming, I think it's, it's really yeah. Did you say we lost out on the signs? When the senior center was being built, I had a list of what people could contribute to, and there was a, um, organization that was going to pay for the sign but it, as it turned out they and they wanted their name at the bottom of it like sponsored by or donated by or whatever it was going to be with their name and um, I was told um, that you couldn't do that because you can't advertise for a business and so they would do it yeah so that was that that was that we're still trying to pick up money for that sign yeah. <laughs> It'll be good at one of these days. The okay. first sign up front and went out back. Yeah. yeah. It'll happen. Um, well, we used to have Wednesday evening programs. We did that for a, a little over a year, and the participation never grew. The number of things we offered never really grew. So, what we're doing now, because Hampshire Coral is here on Tuesday nights, um, is to use the building um, for additional programming of our own. So yoga's here on Tuesday night. And then um, some of the financial workshops or anything in addition to um, what we want to offer can be done on a Tuesday night. It's not opening the building again. It's not paying for another building monitor. It's just working out with um, the group, the coral. Uh, Maximum the use. So we, it's, you know, it's, it, everybody, the building monitor's here, the coffee shop's open, so you know, let's see what else we can add to yeah. it. So. But we're still keeping the Wednesday, the existing Wednesday, Wednesday evening programs. No, we stopped that. Oh, you did stop. We stopped it because um, it, it just was not picking up at all. Yeah. Did, you, did you address the reason why you think that that wasn't, a, that they didn't move anywhere or didn't go anywhere with those? On Wednesdays? Yeah. I don't think we offered it a variety. Um, I, I think we probably could have offered many other types of drop-in uh, programming. So, and some of that's getting addressed with what we're trying to fill in now um, during the day. And I, I think it's something that we would look at again because a lot of people still work during the day mm -hmm. and and need something more to do um, once they get out of work. So, and I, you know, we do get comments about. Um, being open in the evening, and not just one evening, but multiple evenings and on weekends. So, and, and that's all well and good. I believe that that's probably what we should be doing, but that takes a lot of additional resources. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that we can't do it, but there's a lot of things to figure out. So, you know, we'll regroup about the um, lack of participation on Wednesday nights. I'll just give an example. One woman came to tap and then she went in the fitness center, so she was able to get two things um, done in, on a Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. and then it just, it just, the participation didn't pick sure. up. That's, sure. that was, yeah. But everything's worth trying again, one way or another. <coughs> Is that uh, it for the director's report? That's, that's it, yeah. Okay, let's move on to the building and grounds report. Um, well, as you all know, we've had some snowstorms. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. really? So the city was closed, which also meant the senior center was closed on um, February 2nd and then again on February 9th. And if we have a snowstorm this coming Monday, it doesn't matter because it's a holiday, so we're closed um, as it is. So I'm just going to sort of recap what I have to do um, about closing the senior center. Um, the mayor can declare that the city is closed, which means staff do not need to report. If I think that it's um, unsafe for seniors to come down here or whoever's going to be using our building to come down here, um, then I can close the senior center. So I can say the senior center is closed. 
um, but staff still report. So we're in the building and the doors are unlocked if people want to come in, um, you know, because not everybody listens to the radio <laughs> or the three TV stations or calls the front phone uh, by 7.30. So some people do show up um, amazingly, but they do. Um, so if they come in, we still, you know, do, do business with them, but we don't encourage people to come out um, because we never know when our parking lot's going to be plowed um, or sanded. So that's, uh, you know, a lot of caution. So what I do is I get up early in the morning if I know a storm's coming, um, and I look to see what the weather's like, and then I start watching TV to see what other uh, uh, agencies or schools or whatever everybody else is doing. Uh, sometimes I'll call DPW, sometimes I call dispatch just to get a sense of it. And, um, you know, then I get down here by... 7.30, I want to have something on the phone so people can call and make their plans. One of the things, if the weather's bad, our volunteers don't show up and our instructors won't come in. So it pretty mm -hmm. much is mm -hmm. limited. Jim, I know you would still come in, but... Yeah. Yeah. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's, no it's, it's, it's like keeping people off the road and off the sidewalks. Because, yeah. you know, Bob does an excellent job out there, but yeah. he oh. can't keep it all going uh, oh. with the amount of snow that Ooh. keeps coming down. and. Um, you know, you can go from one end of the building to the other and already have another two inches of snow. And I don't know if any of you saw in the paper yesterday um, a guest column on the editorial page. Um, a senior who uses um, a, wheel, a, a, a wheelchair was talking about how people don't shovel and how difficult it is. And the um, writer made a comment about the man at the senior center who's like oh, over 60 who can get out there and, and like clear everything and keep it nice yet you got 40 year olds at the housing authority who can't do that so it was it was nice to see that because he does pay attention to what's happening out there uh, for us the other thing I just wanted to mention too, five college learning and retirement will be back um, starting in March and they'll be here for five weeks. Um, I think this is like their fourth or fifth year of being here um, to do their programs. And Bay State Medical, um, Barbara, you were in that program last year. They're going to be coming back for eight uh, weeks uh, on Wednesday nights. When? So, when? Um, I'd have to it's look at this. this one because they already started this. Yeah, one. there's another it's one another happening. One. Oh, um, good. Yeah, so. get a, I'd go for free. Oh, good. Well, well, I'll it'll, it'll be starting. Many medical school. Oh, right. So it's good to have some return people. We also mm -hmm. have um, CISA who will be coming back mm -hmm. in March. They usually have their annual meeting here. I think this is either the third or fourth year having them here. So. Um, and that's what I have for buildings and grounds. Oh, okay. Any questions? Good. Uh, on the old business. Um, the update on kick the tires. I already mentioned about the ten thousand dollar wonderful contribution, and I, I'm just going to say it's wonderful to get large sums of money. But you know, we really appreciate any dollar amount that we get. It's, it all makes a difference. Um, and then I did mention about. Um, Barbara Bocelli um, memorial gifts being made to the Kick the Tire campaign. And in the paper, it'll have the, uh, when I say the paper, the Con Street Chronicle um, will list um, the new donors and then also where we're at, the dollar amount. Is that it for old business? Yeah, Any questions there? <coughs> okay, on to new business. Anything at all? Anyone got any business? Oh, I was asked a question. Okay. If somebody comes in and wanted to rent the big room for the night, an evening, for a program, can they serve wine? They can serve wine, but they have to get, uh, license. They have to get the license. a permit from the uh, license commission. Okay. And, and also, I have to approve it okay. if they're going to serve um, wine. Wine and beer, but there's no alcohol. Right. Well, I know that there's alcohol in those, but no other kind of alcohol. Those spirits? Yeah, but they can. Um, okay. But it would be a permit. They'd have to go through the license commission. It's expensive. Oh, it's expensive. Okay, announcements. The Valentine Pancake Breakfast, Friday the 13th, tomorrow, mm -hmm. 8.30 to 10. Uh, if you haven't got your ticket, pick it up. Corned beef and cabbage dinner. Again, we've talked about that before. 
the Health and Safety Fair. Next board meeting will be on March 12th and 1 30. Okay. See you there. Can we have a motion to make a motion to adjourn? Second. Captain. All in favor say aye. 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 And leave. <laughs>